jumping into question nine, we've been given a circle. We've been told that we've got a diameter BE and we've got a tangent DA over there. And we've been told that these two lines are perpendicular, which has been indicated on the sketch. And first up, we need to prove with reasons that ABCD is a cyclic quad. Okay, I'm going to highlight that cyclic quad quickly. And now I quickly want to run through the three different ways we could possibly prove a cyclic quad. So the first method of proving a cyclic quad is if you prove this interior angle equals the opposite exterior angle, then you've got a cyclic quad on your hands. So over here that would entail that proving the whole of C is equal to A1. Now I can't really get C because it's outside of the circle. So that's going to entail a lot of hard work to pull that off and it might even be impossible. So I would prefer to run through the other methods of proving a cyclic quad because it might be easier. In the second method of proving a cyclic quad, if you prove that the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees, that adequately proves you have a cyclic quad. So that would mean proving the whole of B plus the whole of D equals 180. Or I could do the whole of A here, or A2 and 3, plus the whole of C equals 180. But I don't know a lot of information about those angles. So I'm going to opt to go for the last method of proving a cyclic quad, which is converse angles in the same segments. If I prove that these angles are equal, then it adequately proves I have a cyclic quad on my hands. And I'm going to do that. You can kind of see this is the bow tie. Angles in the same seg, the nickname for it is the bow tie. So if I prove a bow tie over here in this blue cyclic quad or quadrilateral, then it adequately proves it's a cyclic quad. So I'm going to show you the bow tie that I'm seeing. So I've highlighted the, highlighted the bow tie in red. And they told us that this angle is 90. So I've already got one angle from the bow tie. So if I prove this angle here, A2 is 90, then it's a cyclic quad. And it has to do with this little bit of information, diameter BE. So one of my Euclidean theorem states, if I follow a diameter down to the circumference, I get a 90 degree angle. So we're going to do that with diameter BE. If I follow diameter BE down to the circumference, it takes me to A2. So I know that A2 is a 90 degree angle, and this is my reason. Angles in a semicircle. And now we can see the angles in the bow tie A2 and D2 are matching up. And we just need to show that link to our teachers. So we just say A2 equals D2 equals 90. No reason is required for that line. After we've made that link, we're going to jump to our conclusion that the blue figure ABCD is a cyclic quad. And my reason for that will be the one we discussed earlier, converse angles in the same sig. And lastly, let's just have a look where the marks come from. Stating that A2 is 90 due to angles in a semicircle gets you your first mark. The link between the two angles that are 90 gets you your second mark. And the third mark comes from the correct reason associated with why ABCD is a cyclic quad. In 9.2, we've been asked to prove that BD bisects angle ABC. So they're asking us to prove that BD cuts this angle ABC, so this angle in half. So in essence, what they're asking you to do is prove that B1 is the same size as B2. So firstly, we're going to have to do the tan chord theorem to pull this off. And earlier on, the question told us that this line DA is a tangent, and I somehow want to tie in angle B1 to that. So if I follow the angle B1 down to its chord, it takes me to chord AE. So the angle between the tangent and the chord, so A3, will be equal to B1. And now I somehow need to prove that B2 is also a green angle. And remember this blue figure is a cyclic quad. We proved that in the question previously. So if we just apply angles in the same segments, we follow A3 down and we take it up to B2. 
Just to exaggerate a little bit further on that, if I follow A3 down to the end of the cyclic quad, and then I follow it back up to B2, we can see that A3 and B2 are equal because of angles in the same segment. That's one of the visual clues you can use. You can also use the visual clue of a bow tie. You can kind of like draw a bow tie and see it as a bow tie. And our bow tie would have looked like this. So we can see that A3 is equal to B2 because of the bow tie. Okay, let's have a look how we write that down. So firstly, we're going to say A3 is equal to B2 because of angles in the same sig, aka the bow tie. And then we need to show how we knew that A3 was the same size as B1. That was through the use of the tan chord theorem. And we write that up just like this, A3 equals B1 tan chord theorem. And now we need to make the link between these two. So I literally just say, therefore, B1 equals B2. They're both green angles. And then I just do a concludery statement and say, therefore, BD by 6 angle ABC. And lastly, having a look at the marks, we have one mark for the statement, one mark for this statement, and one mark for this reason. Lastly, in question 9, we need to prove that EC is a tangent to the circle OEF. So EC is over here, and they want us to prove it's a tangent to the circle OEF. Now, there's no circle around OEF, so if it helps you, you must draw it. So if we had to draw the circle OEF, it would kind of look something like this. And to prove that this is a tangent, we need to prove the converse tan chord theorem. And what I actually need to do is prove that these angles are equal, and that will make this line a tangent to that circle. So in the context of our question, I would need to prove that angle E3 is equal to O1. And that will adequately prove what they are asking us to do, if we just prove that E3 is equal to O1. So I'm going to get rid of the circle and I'm going to start working on that. I'm going to start off with O1. Now I can see O1 is at the center of the circle. And I know there's an angle here that I've already dealt with at the circumference of the circle. So O1 will be two times the size of B2. And for that, we used angle at center is two times the angle at the circumference. So the one in the middle is two times the one at the circumference. So we're going to put this as our reason next to this line. And now I'm going to focus on E3. If I can prove that E3 is two times the size of a green angle, then we've got a winner winner chicken dinner on our hands here. What I'm noticing is that E3 is the exterior angle of this cyclic quad, EFBA. And I know a theorem that ties in the exterior angle of a cyclic quad to the opposite interior angle. And that theorem states that this exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle. So if we apply that here, this exterior angle of the blue cyclic quad will be equal to the opposite interior angle. So it's equal to this green angle plus this green angle. So it's two times the size of a green angle, my bro. And now in essence, our job is almost finished. We've proved that E3 is the same size as O1. They both double the size of a green angle. And let's see how we're gonna write that up. Firstly, I need to show how I got E3 to be double the size of that green angle. So I'll firstly just say E3 is equal to B1 plus B2 because of exterior angle of a cyclic quad as we discussed. But from the previous question we know that B1 and B2 are the same size. So I kind of want to get E3 to look the same as this. So I want to change B1 to B2. But before I do that I have to include a statement that says but B1 equals B2. And our reason for that, it was literally proven in the previous question. So we just say proven above. Now I'm going to change this B1 to a B2. And after I do that, B2 plus B2 is 2B2. It's like X plus X is 2X. And after I've done that, you can see that O1 and E3 equal the same thing. E3 is 2B2. O1 is 2B2. Graphically, we've been saying O1 is two times the green angle and E3 is two times the green angle. 
So from that, we're just going to conclude, therefore, O1 is the same size as E3, like this. And last but not least, I now need to conclude that EC is a tangent to the circle OEF, for the reason we discussed earlier, converse tan chord theorem. And we write it just like this, EC is a tangent to the circle OEF for the converse tan chord theorem, as your reason. Right, let's have a look where the four marks are coming from. So your first mark will come from the statement and reason that's associated with angle at the center is two times the angle at the circumference. The exterior angle of cyclic quad statement gets you a reason. Making the link between O1 and E3 gets you your third mark and the converse tan chord theorem gets you your fourth mark. And just in case you wanted to see it visually again, I've drawn the circles so now we can actually see the tan chord theorem in action over there. And that wraps up Frostal Nierchermabre.